everyone and welcome to episode 54 of my Doll's House Diary. Now in today's episode I'm going to be back in the entrance hall and making the stringer to run alongside the stairs from the ground floor up to the first floor. So let's get started. Okay, so what I've started off by doing here is just cutting a paper template so that I can work out the exact length that I need to cut then the wooden stringer. So it's quite difficult actually to get in, but at the bottom there you can see I'm overhanging by quite a bit, but you need to get it so that you've got a, a corner there that you can cut that comes up right up to your corner of your skirting board, if you see what I mean. So you'll have a bit overhanging, but you need to place it as low down as you can so that you're going to be joining all the way down the piece of skirting and sort of touching at that top corner and then you need to do the same thing at the top so if we just go up like that so this is obviously now a lot longer than I need it but I'll cut it off straight that way from that very corner again of the skirting board and then what I am going to need to do is just make some cuts in that because it's not sitting where it sort of comes to there, it's not sitting against the floor, so it's a little bit higher than it should be. So I may just need to make a little cut in the bottom edge of the stringer. But what I'm going to do first is actually get a new stringer made. So I want to do it sort of the same as I did before, that piece here. So I've taken the top edge of the skirting board and then stuck that onto a piece of sheet wood. So I want to do it like that again. So the idea of the template at this stage is just to get the length right. And then I'll come back in again with the template and make pencil marks for all those little areas that I need to cut out. And they'll look as though they're at some strange angles, but then it will all fit back in nicely. And then I'm hoping that I'll be able to use the same template for the second set of stairs, which will make things easier. But like I say, I'm going to start by actually making the stringer. So let's head back into the craft room. So I've cut the paper template straight now. And I just wanted to show you that it's actually only about half an inch or 12 millimetres longer than the original that I made. So I wish I'd have done this in the first place, really. And then also what I've just done is take my cut piece of paper and go and measure it again just to make sure that that does fit and it's really important that you sort of keep measuring at each stage of the job otherwise if you would now make one of these and then you go and try it and it again is the wrong length then you've wasted an awful lot of time and your materials um, by doing it so always just keep checking it's quicker in the long run so I'm now going to make the new stringer okay so I've cut here a piece of skirting board to the same length as my template and I now just want to cut off this top shaped piece. I'm going to cut along the line there and then join my sheet wood from there. If you just sort of join your skirting board on top of your sheet wood you're going to have that line so it's always best to cut where you've got a sort of line in the pattern. I'm actually going to use my old one to prop that up. Like that. neatly along that line. So we'll always just begin with a really light score. Hold it onto your wool nice and tightly and then you can sort of go along again and actually make the cut and that way you're more likely to stay on track. Okay, so there's my moulded piece of skirting, cut to length. And then I'm using basswood for the base of the stringer. And this is three millimetres thick. And I've had to cut it in two pieces because I only have 12 inch long pieces of sheet wood. And this is just over that. So I've just had to cut a little piece to stick in at the end, which is a little bit annoying. But if you have to make a join, a good rule of thumb is to always make it where it's going to be less obvious so this will be at the top of the stairs and don't forget I'm going to be cutting into this top bit to shape it around that top stair so hopefully I'll hide or, or get rid of a bit of that as well. 
Okay, so I'm now going to stick these pieces together. So I've secured the template back into place now, just with a piece of masking tape. And now I actually want to make pencil marks of where I need to make those cuts. So just to say, when you're placing it at the bottom, you want to make sure that you've got enough hanging over to cut a straight line against your skirting board so that you're not going to have that little triangle gap at the bottom there. So place it as far down as you need to so that you're covering the skirting board. And then at the top, make sure that you're sort of coming right up to the corner of your skirting board. And it's really difficult to get in here and sort of point and things with the camera as well. So I'm going to make the pencil marks on this now and then we'll go back into the craft room and actually cut that into my new piece of stringer. Okay, so I've marked up the template now. That's at the bottom of the stairs. And then that little sort of section to come out at the top there. And I'm now going to cut around this so I can then transfer those markings onto my actual stringer. Now I'm going to cut just slightly behind my pencil line and then if I need to make any more adjustments I can but don't cut too much off at this stage. And that's that bit and then the top there that was the bit that sort of sat around the floor. And then that bit comes up near that top stair, or that top piece of skirting, sorry. And see what a sort of funny shape it is. To, to sort of try and work that out without having a template would be quite difficult. So it's a really good idea just to use a piece of paper so you can get an exact marking. Now I'm actually going to go and try this into place again make any slight adjustments that I might need to make and then I can copy that onto my stringer. So that was actually a really nice fit. I just had to cut a tiny bit more from there and that's the bit that goes along the floor. And then I added in a little bit along the cut I'd made there. So I just used a piece of masking tape just to add in an extra millimeter there. So I'm now going to cut this out. And actually, just laying that on there like that, I was going to have to fill that bit because I cut a little bit too much off. But by doing this, it's actually cutting that section away, so that's really good. So what I'm going to do is now just draw this on. Nice sharp pencil so you get as close to your template as you can. That. And I'm still a bit nervous about doing this. I'm still a little bit worried that it's not going to be completely accurate. But we can always do a bit of filling if we need to. Like that. And then I'm actually going to use my ruler to cut against. Let's start with that tiny little corner. that end. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's go and try it into place. So it's just a little bit too tight, so I'm just going to take a tiny bit off of the sort of bottom end. And when you're doing this, like I always say, just take a tiny amount off and then come back to it and do it again. But don't take too much off in one go. off probably about half a millimetre here, if that. Right, so I'll go and try this again. So I've actually been back and forth with this about six times now, just taking off tiny little amounts each time. And it was this bottom edge that was causing the problem. And there is a tiny little bit of gapping in there, but that bit is actually hidden. 
although once I've fitted it I will do a little bit of filling. But I'm really pleased with how that looks. And then if I just show you that as well with the stairs in place. And I think with the stairs in, that looks really good. So there is a little bit of gap in at that bottom edge there. Although looking at it from here, it looks as though I've just sat it a little bit high at the moment. So obviously once that's glued in, that will sit in the right place. But I'm really pleased with that. So I'm going to get a coat of paint on that now and then we can get that glued into place. So I've given the stringer a couple of coats of paint and I sanded gently after each coat and this is now completely dry. So I'm now going to glue it into place. Okay, so that's the stringer now glued into place. There's a little bit of gap in which I'm now going to fill and then I can just go over and give that a gentle sand and then touch up the paint. But otherwise, I'm really pleased with that. It did take some pressing into place just because the walls aren't completely straight since I've sort of done the redecoration. But I think that's a pretty good fit. Right, so let me go and find my wood filler. OK, so that's the filling, sanding and repainting now done. And I'm really pleased with how it looks. I got a bit of paint on the floor there, which I've sanded off and taken off a little bit of the wood dye. But the stairs actually cover that, so that's OK. So what I'm going to do now is put the stairs and the cupboard in to show you how it all looks together. So the stairs aren't in exactly the correct position how they are now, just because I've had to prop the top stair sort of over the top of the landing to get it to hold itself up. But normally that would sit flush with the landing and I'll sort of glue that top stair directly to the sort of piece of floor at the back there. But I am really happy with how that looks. I think the stringer just really finishes it off. So I would say it's well worth doing, even though sort of getting the, the measurements and the angles correct can be quite tricky. But hopefully how I've done it will make it a little bit easier. So I think putting in your bottom piece of skirt in first and then your top piece and then just making the stringer to fit in between them is a really good way of doing it. So I'm really pleased with that. And then the other good news is that I've just tried, if I just bring the light up onto this floor. So I've just tried the template up here on the sort of first to the second floor stairway and it, it will work as well. So that makes it a lot easier. So if I just put the bottom piece of skirting in there and then I've cut a too long a piece for the top here. So I just sort of cut it the same length as I did for the sort of floor below, but it will need to be shorter. But if I just put the template in, so level it up down there, like that and then if I just come up to the top there so see how it's just a little bit too long at the back there so all I need to do is just make a mark where I need to trim that skirting off and then that will fit perfectly up there as well so I can make a second stringer and then I can get all of the skirting and coving cut for in here and that's why I didn't want to glue the stairs these first set of stairs and cupboard into place yet because obviously I'll need to get to the skirting at the back there I don't want the banister rail being in the way but I'll get all of that done for the next episode so in episode 55 we'll finish off in these hallways and then of course I need to have a think about rebuilding that window. So I've tried to find one pre-made, but I can't find one in that exact size. So I am gonna have to build one. But yeah, really pleased that I've actually got the stringer cut and fitted and that it looks so good. Okay, so that's it for today's episode and I'm really pleased I finally got that string up made. Now I can continue with the landing and then get all of the skirting and coving cut for both of those areas. And then of course we'll be tackling the arched window. So that will all be coming up in episode 55. Until then, take care. Bye.